Hello there, welcome back to the channel. And in this episode, we are going to be discussing Star Trek's peculiar relationship with a lot of things that are out of universe. And, I mean, it's, it's not always been the best with toys and other such things, but it's not that. It's music. Star Trek and music. Now, within universe, there's lots of music. Let's all collectively cringe at a episode of Star Trek Strange New Worlds, and although it's a good episode, it's a... K-pop Klingons. Okay. In-universe, it's fantastic. You've got, of course, people like Riker, who enjoy their music, love jazz, and play an instrument. You've got Data, who's in a band, effectively. And it goes on from there. There's plenty of in-universe music that's absolutely fantastic. Worf and his operas as well, and etc. We're talking, though, out of universe. So that's the theme songs, and you know which one we're going to be talking about. And also some of the stuff that's kind of Star Trek adjacent. And there's one in particular I really, really want to discuss, which is Star Trekking by the firm. When we're talking about merchandising and out of universe weird associations with some beloved franchises being a huge star trek fan nothing has ever come weirder to me or potentially more loved than the firm star trekking released in 1987 a little bit before the first episode of star trek the next generation was actually aired i think um it was only in only just in production actually uh, and this thing came out and i can't play it but we're gonna have a little talk about it so as i said it was released in 1987 by british band the firm the entire music video is entirely sort of unnerving stop motion potato head things with aliens that are clearly not actually in any way from Star Trek and lots of weird stuff that happens, like the Enterprise is suddenly made of food, like a pizza and sausages and stuff. And you got some weird tin dog chasing after it. I don't know, the music video makes no sense. The whole video is kind of bonkers and it's kind of the way it goes. But it definitely feels like, to me, a labor of love. It feels like some, it's almost a love letter in a very comical way to Star Trek particularly when you analyze the lyrics. Now, the lyrics, again, are kind of stupid, but it does the thing where it takes catchphrases, many of the characters. Like, uh, there's Klingons off the starboard bow. I cannot change the laws of physics, Jim. It's life, Jim, but not as we know it. All the characters, they lift things that they said. They don't take the actual actor's voice. They do it themselves, and they quote them, and they turn that somehow into this masterpiece. And let's, the only bit I'm going to think I can try and get away with playing because I listened to this, and for a long time, I did actually think this was lifted straight from Star Trek. That it sound, or oh, they got Shatner to actually record this bit. Because just, just listen to Kirk for the couple of seconds I can play this audio. Ah, oh, we come in peace, shoot to kill, shoot to kill, shoot to kill. It sounds a lot like Kirk, at least to me, and. It's not, but it sounds a hell of a lot like him. Now, as I said, Star Trek's had a weird relationship. Now, this song's had a lot of love and hate over the years. A lot of people have forgotten it exists, and I bet a lot of newer Star Trek fans might not have ever even heard of it. And if you haven't, it's on YouTube and all the things where you can go and find your music if you're so inclined. It's worth listening to just for the sheer hilarity and stupidity of the song. But it does, it to me, it exemplifies a problem Star Trek has with its out-of-universe merchandising. It's, I mean, there's legendary things like the Spock helmet and various other toys that have come out over the years that don't really fit the universe. They're not there. It's like pirated ideas and unlicensed toys. And even when it's something that's licensed, they never seem to really capitalize on it, even in the modern era. I mean... Aside from Eagle Moss, I can't easily get hold of any Star Trek models. I recently saw one for Blue Bricks, but as I don't particularly like Lego, yeah, come at me, I don't, it's not realistic enough. If I want a model of a ship, I want it to look like a ship. I don't want it to look like a Lego version of that ship. Separate issue. Different video entirely, maybe. But 
it, Star Trek's never been the best at capitalizing on that rev potential revenue stream. And the music goes right hand in hand with it. Now, before we get to another sort of out of universe song that I know we're waiting to, for me to mention, let's talk about the actual opening sequences in general. Now, all the Star Trek series, all their opening sequences, you're getting a flavor of what the show is going to be about. Deep Space Nine in particular changed its opening sequence a little bit. The basic background music stayed the same, yeah, but it was sort of very drawn out. It was grand. It gave you the feeling of this show is going to have scope, even though it's going to be isolated in one local location. And it sort of just does the slow circle of the station. Quite frankly, I always felt it was a little long. But I like it. Next Generation, I'm going to say controversial opinion. I don't like the Next Generation's opening sequence. Never did. It's kind of boring. It's too long. You got that opening monologue by Picard, which in my opinion should have just been the opening and be done with it. Or not have that and just have the music. The music, though, is spectacular. It's as a theme for the show. It's exciting. It's new. It was telling you you were in for an adventure once you got out of the first couple of seasons. Let's be honest again. But it was an adventurous, optimistic piece of music that fit the show. In general, they all do, and then there's Faith of the Heart. Come on, sorry. Faith of the Heart, of course, sung by British opera singer Russell Watson. Uh, I don't actually hate the song. I don't. I don't like it as a Star Trek theme. But it's another, it is another example of Star Trek missteps with music. This one, unlike Star trek which is just hilarious, is endorsed. It wasn't originally wrote for Star Trek, though. It was actually a, a Rod Stewart song for the movie Patch Adams. And Russell Watson covered it, uh, pot rocked it up a little bit. And obviously, in the th third season of Enterprise, they tried to put a different beat into it, which made it even worse than the first two season version. I don't hate the song. I just don't think it fits. It is, interestingly, the first Star Trek series to have lyrics in its opening sequence, not just voiceover from Patrick Stewart, unless you include the original series, where you've got the woman bellowing at the top of her lungs, but those aren't lyrics. But that theme does have lyrics, moderately famously, I think. Um, Gene Roddenberry did kind of a dick move, and in order to get some of that sweet royalties from the use of the song, he had he wrote lyrics for the song even though there were no lyrics for the song and the lyrics were never used in the show. He did it purely for the moolah, for the money, for the green, or the blue if you're in the UK, mostly. Browns. All different colours, actually. Anyway. But, yeah, this is, again, Star Trek and its weird relationship with music. And all I can say is... Why? I've never understood why they can't actually move forward with the franchise out of the universe and actually capitalize them. Because imagine the extra money, all that extra investment, and make the show a lot better. It worked for Star Wars until Disney got their hands on it. So why not for Star Trek? And that's where I kind of fall on this. It's like, I love Star Trek. -ing. It's a great song. It's stupid. It makes no sense. It's ridiculous. But it's fun. And it's awesome which is a lot like star trek faith of the heart is not star trek i understand what they were going for i know what they were going for in this in the, the idea of the song the context of it show and the way they open i actually really like the opening sequence but it doesn't fit my favorite piece of music from star trek is actually the mirror universe theme they made for the opening sequence of the um, absolutely epic two-parter from enterprise but and they didn't even get asked to do that they just did it because you know it was such an exciting concept but what do you guys think have you heard these songs of course you've heard faith of the heart but have you heard star trek and you, you know just just know that song let me know in the comment section below do you love it do you hate it is this the first you've ever heard of it okay there was there was a couple more things i i forgot to include in ours i was filming this uh or or possibly the camera ran out not entirely sure but that was another couple of adjacent Star Trek Outer Universe stuff, which is Star Trek actors trying their hand at a music career. Uh, more power to them. I don't particularly like to sing. 
don't really have any interest in a musical career. So, you know, good for them. We're, we've all got the um, forever image in our head of William Shatner's rendition of Rocket Man in spoken word form. None of these I can play, but um, my favorite has to be Leonard Nimoy, if you didn't know, tried it. And don't get me wrong, I loved Leonard Nimoy, not just as Spock, but as a human being. Damn, he was just amazing. But his his uh, Ballad of Bilbo Baggins, I strongly urge you to look it up on YouTube and just spend like three minutes of your life that you don't need to get back. You will enjoy it, but dude, why? Why did you do this? Star, it's, it's nothing to do with Star Trek. Obviously, it's more Lord of the Rings, which is also an awesome franchise, both in book and movie form. But the, this, this song, he sang it. He really sang it. He made this. And I can't, I can't show the footage. I'd love to because I just know it'll get demonetized instantly. I'd love to show you the footage. I would. But I can't. So go look it up. Listen to it. More Star Trek adjacent stuff. That is now the end of this video.